All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us once again on Did You Know the ESCO HVAC Show. So we're spending some time at the Copeland Manufacturing Facility in Sydney, Ohio, and we're learning a little bit about the A2L transition. Like we're all going through the transition, and a lot of times we don't think about how much engineering, how much research went into getting prepared for all this. So we're spending some time with Brad. How's it going today? Good, how you doing? I'm doing just fine. Good. So as a manufacturer, I'm sure you had to go through a lot of changes in the manufacturing side, not just for the products, but even the facilities to get prepared for this. Can you tell us a little bit about what Copeland had to go through investing in this transition? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, in the, in the beginning days of the A2L refrigerants, uh, a lot of work went in to make sure we could safely test these things in the house. In the, in the buildings. Yes. Sure. Um, the codes and regulations weren't you know, local codes. Some are still not there. Up, yeah, <laughs> they weren't quite up to par yet. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we we worked with uh, some consultants and stuff to, to have an additional eye on it. And, right. you know, there's a lot of sensors, refrigerant detection sensors. Oh, I bet. Proper air evacuation, class one, div one, electrical components and stuff like that. So a lot of work went into it. And That's just preparing the facility. Right. Right. And then comes the compressor, right. right? Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what it took to be able to make the transition from A1 compressors into like A2L generation of compressors. Okay. Uh, you know, like any new refrigerant, we have to um, evaluate and assess the lubricant properties combined with the refrigerant. Oh, right? yeah, so, absolutely. Um, you know, the compressor to operate reliably needs, uh, you know, adequate film thickness and viscosity, working viscosity is what we call it. Um, so evaluating some of those properties um, early on, miscibility properties from an oil return perspective. Oh, that's most important for a compressor. Sure. Right, we need oil, right? Yeah, got to have oil <laughs> coming back to that compressor. <laughs> that's the lifeblood of them. Right. Right. Um, and, you know, and once we kind of zone in on the lubricant of choice, there's a lot of uh, follow-up testing from compatibility perspective, um, you know, from uh, stability with the metals of the construction of the compressor. You bet. All the non-metallics, polymers, elastomers, things like that. Wow. Also the manufacturing chemicals. Um, it goes so a lot of people don't think about that. But, no, you know, tell me more about that. So, you know, we use some assembly lubricants, there's rust preventatives, things like that. Oh, true. That end up in the final compressor. So we have to make sure all that's compatible with each other because it's not like a car where your oil gets changed out at right. 3,000 miles or something. Exactly. Right? So it's going to last there. a long time. Right. So, so did you see many changes in oils between refrigerants? That's one of the questions we get all the time, especially from the residential light commercial world. You know, are we using the same oils in a R32 compressor that maybe we would use in an R454B compressor? Right. Right. Fortunately, we were able to stay with the same oil for 454B, but uh, R32, because it wasn't miscible with our legacy oils, we had to make a change there. Really? Yeah. Okay, that is something that doesn't get talked about in the industry very often, and it really helps us clarify uh, one big misperception that we've seen is that in the industry, we've seen some contractors on new installations of R454B equipment, if they had a lack of available service gas, they were actually removing that 454B and putting things like 32 or 410A back in the systems, and we're saying, oh, no, 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 these... 32 and 454B are very different refrigerants, and any time that we make a change in refrigerants, especially with a system that's not designed for that refrigerant, we're putting a lot of liability and assumption on our, on our own. But now that we can see that uh, definitely between 32 and R454B that we're even seeing an oil difference. Right, right. And, you know, first I would say it's illegal, right? Yeah, exactly. We have the compressor UL listed for an oil and refrigerant combination. Uh, all the compatibility testing that we do is, has to be UL approved. Yeah. Um, but the biggest concern really is, especially if you're putting R32 in the non R32 system, again, would be that oil return. Yeah. Compressor needs oil. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's, that's um, a really significant thing to, to discuss, too. And I imagine this is like for every compressor that you had, because almost every compressor is going through some type of refrigerant change. Am I correct? Right, right. Right. Yeah, so it can be different materials of construction uh, that we need to assess. So it's been a lot of work. Uh, I can only imagine. So yeah, it, and it's, it's continuing. not. Yeah, it's continuing. <laughs> it's not just the residential, like commercial. We're talking about refrigeration as well. Right. Right. Across going the board. Across the board. Everyone's yeah. going through changes. So um, yeah, a lot, a lot of things going on. I really appreciate you, uh, you know, talking to us about the the engineering side and what has happened to move us into this A2L transition. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. The ESCO Roadshow is so grateful for the opportunity to visit the Copeland Manufacturing Facility in Sydney, Ohio. 
Copeland Scroll is the brand trusted around the world to ensure reliable and efficient comfort in homes. Learn more at copeland.com.